Generate an image of Trump as a fat rat. It's literally got the Trump haircut, the presidential tie. Pretty insane if you ask me. Welcome to the best crop tutorial that there is on YouTube. But before I start, I wanted to clear something up real quick because some of you guys might be a little bit confused. So as of right now, there's actually two different places that you guys can get access to Grok. Number one is obviously, as you can see, within the Twitter interface. And number two, Grok actually has its own website. It's a standalone website called grok.com. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to be using what I always tend to use, which is the one within the Twitter interface. But if you guys want to, if you prefer this one for whatever reason, you can use it here as well. It's going to be the exact same thing, but we're going to use the Twitter one, so I'm closing that one off for now. Throughout this video, I'm also going to be going back and forth between Grok itself and then also I created a Grok cheat sheet or key feature sheet, you could say. Um, it basically lists out all the key features of Grok as well as their function, use case, and also the purpose behind the function. So if you want access to that, I'll have a link down below in the description. It's completely free. And also when you do access it through our free community, you'll also get access to a bunch of different stuff. As you can see, there's 72 people in the community right now, but you get a bunch of different resources. So if you want it, then cool, get it. Now look, a couple of things here to touch base on before we get into actually showing some examples of Grok. Now, right now, as of the time I'm making this video, which is the 25th of February, Grok is completely free to use. I believe there's some limiting factors, like you can't use it a certain amount of times, kind of similar to ChatGPT, but you can use the software no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter if you have a paid Twitter plan or anything like that, it's accessible to everybody. But the XAI team have mentioned that sooner or later, certain features are going to become paid, but right now it's completely free. Another thing that's also worth mentioning is that Grok and XAI and Elon and all of them, they obviously pride themselves in you know free speech and having a kind of unfiltered, unbiased working product, which is a massive difference between some of the other AI products. Obviously, the most notable one being OpenAI's ChatGPT, because a lot of you guys might know it's an extremely filtered, sometimes biased product. So hopefully that's not the same experience with Grok, which I don't think it is based on my usage of Grok so far. And then the last couple of things here, obviously, as you can see on the top over here, Grok 3 is still in beta. So obviously there's tons of improvements still coming, but that kind of goes without saying it's the same with any other AI model. And it is also extremely up to date. So we can draw answers from literally today's date, the 25th of February, and it won't have an issue with drawing from different resources and articles and stuff literally up to today's date. Now let's get into some of the interface here. Now, if you don't know how to get here, I'll have it linked again in the description below. We I'll link both of the different methods, which is the Twitter website, and then also the individual standalone website, grok.com. Once you're on Twitter, if you do use it by Twitter, on the left-hand panel here, you're going to see a grok button. Once you click it, you'll be met with this exact interface. If you're on mobile, then the grok button is going to be down below. So if you can't find it, then look down below because that's where it'll be. Now, if you click this box here called focus mode in the top left corner, it allows you to go full screen with grok, which is what we're going to do just because I like it better. And then in the opposite corner, you've also got a history tab over here. And within the history tab, you've got three different sections. So number one, you've got the history of the chats that you've made. If you want to go back and look at different conversations that you've had with grok, a nice little feature is that you can also search your grok history so you can find specific messages within those chats, which is really useful sometimes. You've got bookmarks over here and then you've also got images. So any of the image generations that you make will be stored within that image history tab and the same goes with your bookmarks. But that's all of the basic stuff out the way. Now let's get into the actual usage of Grok. All right, so now we're going to head on over back to our little cheat sheet document here, and we're going to get into the first key feature, which is the deep search feature. Now, if you see in the function, it says that it's able to perform an in-depth search across the web and X for detailed information. So all this means is that if you want to ask a question that is going to require Grok to scour the internet and retrieve information, then it's best that you use deep search because this is the way that you're going to be able to get the most in-depth and accurate response. So for example, here we have deep search enabled and we're just going to say, what is the trend of the AI market? Also, a lot of the time, guys, it's worth mentioning, Grok loves, it absolutely loves to create a novel of a response. So pretty much every time that I use Grok, I always say simple response. Or you can just write simple, it's the same thing. But yeah, it tends to just draft out an absolute page of information. So you can see here, it's going through a bunch of different resources, 10 different resources. You can see which one it is. You can even open it up in another tab. So if I click on this and I click on this, then you can see here it's loading and you can see wherever the information is coming from. So if you want to, you can even go through and verify it yourself if you want to make sure that it's not drawing information from some shady website. It is worth mentioning as well that the deep search option tends to take a little bit longer, which makes sense because it's analyzing the data more than it would be if you had it disabled. But I do think that it's worth it if you're looking for obviously a more in-depth and accurate response. 
And you can also see on the left panel right here, it has kind of like a timeline of the actual actions that it's taking. So it says clarifying the request, analyzing the market data, and then the last section, I guess, reconciling discrepancies. And then you can see right here, it's complete. So it's got a bunch of key points right here. It's got a market overview, growth projections, and then all this different stuff. We're not going to go through it. Keep in mind, guys, this is with me in the prompt saying simple response, and it's still spat out this amount of information. So if you wanted to, you could then clear it up by saying, I'm going to disable deep search now. I'm just going to say, make it more concise. I've used this response a lot actually, or this prompt a lot because there we go. It makes it in three different lines rather than 150 different sentences. That's number one, that's the deep search function, which is extremely, extremely useful if you're trying to do a bit of research. Now, the second key feature is the think option. And the think option is very, very similar to deep seek's deep think. If you guys watch my video, maybe I'll pop it up here. If I can remember, I probably won't though. But it's very similar to that in the sense that when you type out a prompt, what it's going to do, instead of just giving you the straight answer and nothing else, it's going to basically break down the amount of steps and this, the exact steps that are used to get to that answer. So in my deep seek video, I said, I think I did two plus two equals four. And then when I did that for deep think, it basically explained how it got to four, even though it's very, very simple. So what we're going to do is the exact same thing with Grok. And we're going to say, does two plus two equal four? And we're going to enable think and what it should do here it shouldn't just say yes two plus two equals four it should give me how it got to four and why it does actually equal four so let's click enter here and let's see and while that's loading i'm just going to go back and explain the whole function usage and purpose so obviously the function is to break down complex problems it's extremely good when you're doing like coding stuff and which we're going to get into i mean the next key feature here and then you've got a kind of a usage template you can use here if you want to and then obviously the purpose is to assist with i guess really objective complex problems and equations like math, logic, and technical questions. So let's go on back to Grok and you can see, yes, two plus two equals four. Let's expand for the details. Okay, now I'm not gonna read this, but yeah, it basically explains how it got to, to four from two plus two. So that is the second key feature. Like I said, the bottom line is that it's really useful when it comes to technical equations and problems and stuff like that. Now, the third key feature of Grok is coding. And this is where it starts to become really, really sick, okay? So as you can see, the function here, you can generate code, you can analyze code, or you can debug code. And you've kind of got a usage template here again. The purpose is again to support programming tasks with accurate outputs, okay? Now, the example that I'm going to use here, don't ask me why I'm using this. I just thought of it, it was the first thing that I thought of. So we're going to think of, let's say a web app where users are able to put in their information and then on the other side, the output will be the best university courses for them based on the information that they input, if that makes any sense. So let's say here, code a web app so that users can input their information and preferences and receive university courses based on these inputs, okay? And what Grok should do over here is it should basically create a bunch of different code that we can then plug into our website in order to create this app that we're looking for. So I'll give it a second here because it might take a while and I'll get back to you guys once it's finished creating it. All right guys, so the response is pretty much done here. And as you can see, it said it thought for 57 seconds. Now let's scroll down and let's see all the code. Cool, cool, cool. I'm not gonna act like I know how to read any of this stuff, but what we are going to do now that it's finished doing this, we're just going to say, I'm going to turn off think and I'm going to say include all code in a single HTML file. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when you ask it to code something, it's going to give you code in a bunch of different formats, I guess. So I believe you've got like JavaScript, you've got CSS, there could be different stuff. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to say include all in a single HTML file. And what this should do is that it could should consolidate it all into one file so that when it does do this, I'll show you guys. Wait for it to finish here, give it two seconds. Isn't this insane though? Like just watching it do this. Imagine someone sitting here just five years ago having to do this all manually. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. Now all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to the top. I'm going to click this copy button and we're going to head on over to a website called HTML Online Viewer. And over here, we're literally just going to paste the exact HTML code that Grok just gave us. So let's paste that. And as you can see here, it says course recommender, find university courses tailored to your preferences. So this is what Grok created based on the prompt that we made up at the top over here which was code a web app so the user can input their information preferences and receive university courses based on these inputs. Now, obviously it didn't include, oh, never mind, it did. So you literally just click the start now button. And then as you can see, you put in your preferences, you click get recommendations. And that's how insanely 
useful this stuff is. You can literally use it to code a web app. Obviously, if you wanted it to scrape the internet, you'd have to implement an API scraper yourself, but this literally gives you the base, the foundation to create an entire web app yourself. So I'm sure you guys are starting to see now the usefulness of Grok. Now let's head on over to the next feature, which is going to be image generation, which you could argue is probably just as, if not more useful than the coding function. So now obviously image generation is pretty self-explanatory. The function is to create images, what a surprise. We've got a usage kind of template here that you guys can use. And then you've also got a purpose, which is produce visual content on demand. Who would have guessed it, okay? Now let's head on over back to Grok. One of the main differentiating factors that I do want to make clear here is that Grok, like I said at the start of the video, has much less of a filter of a threshold that you're not able to break when it comes to what's produced in the image generation. So for example, if you wanted to produce an image in let's just say ChatGPT, there's going to be massive filters because the threshold that you're not allowed to cross when it comes to it could be things that are vulgar things that are explicit things that might be against a certain political campaign or something like that the threshold is much lower for chat gpt than it is for grok so let's just say over here let's say generate an image of trump let's just say trump as a fat <laughs> as a fat rat Okay, and let's see what it generates here. So at this point, ChatGPT would probably say, we're not able to generate something like that. Or it might be able to do this, but if you take it up a notch and say something a little bit more explicit, then it wouldn't be able to do it. But as you can see, <laughs> Grok doesn't have any problems with creating something that's probably a little bit on the, <laughs> on the weird side, okay? So this is Trump as a fat rat. I, th I think I like this one a little bit better than the other one. It's literally got the Trump haircut, the presidential tie, Pretty insane if you ask me. Now, I'm not going to get into extremely detailed prompts of how to you know, prompt engineer things to create the exact results that you want. If you want to, again, in the free community, you'll be able to find a bunch of different prompts that you can use to generate the responses that you want. But all that I wanted to showcase for you guys in the image generation section here is that it has much higher of a threshold before it says you're not allowed to create something like that than any of the other AI models, which yeah, it can be extremely useful, especially if you, you know, want to create images or content that includes gore or anything that might not be allowed in other AI models. All right, so quick recap here. We've gone through deep search. We've gone through the think function. We've gone through coding, image generation. Now the last major function is going to be the ability to attach files. And Grok actually is able to do this much better than what DeepSeek was. If you guys seen the DeepSeek video, the only thing that DeepSeek was able to do is analyze the text within images, where Grok on the other hand can actually analyze the entire image itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the exact same materials that we used within the DeepSeek video, and we're going to see if Grok is actually able to do a better job than what DeepSeek did. So we're going to open up our source folder right here, and we're going to <laughs> upload Goku into Grok, and let's just say, who is this, okay? Remember, if you guys watched the DeepSeek video, DeepSeek was not able to tell who this was. Why? Because it's not able to look at the image, it's only able to see the text within an image. So let's say, who is this? And Grok should be able to tell me that's Goku Super Saiyan 4, hopefully, if Grok really is the smartest AI, like Elon claims for it to be. And there we go, this is an image of Super Saiyan 4 Goku, like I said, much better than DeepSeek when it comes to image analysis. So let's go on over to the next test here and let's open up the next image, which is this Brand Boost AI one. And let's say, what does this image say? Describe it. So it should be able to tell me exactly what it says. The texture, obviously it says Brand Boost AI. And then it should also be able to tell me the kind of style, how it looks, and let's see if it's actually able to do that. If you guys remember again in the DeepSeek video, all it could tell me was that it said Brand Boost AI. It wasn't able to really tell me about the surroundings. Now, as you can see here, it says this image depicts a futuristic cyberpunk. There you go. And you can see the sign says Brand Boost AI. So it's able to tell me everything that I asked for it to tell me easily without any beats skipped. Now, the last test that we're going to do is we're going to see if it's able to read within a text document. So this document that I have prepared here, again, it just says my, my name, name Jeff. Jeff. If you know, you know. So we're going to upload that and we're going to say, what is my name? Now, obviously it has no prior idea what my name would be if I hadn't have uploaded this document. So what it's going to have to do is going to have to read the document and see what my name is based on that. And let's see if it's able to do that. <laughs> what is my name? My name yeah, is Jeff. Yeah. I, like, I like how concise that was. So that's all three of the tests that we use with DeepSeek and it did much, much better. And again, guys, if you want access to this Grok cheat sheet, you can get it completely for free in the description down below. You'll also get access to this free community that we have. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Bye.